Our second rig is going to be a character that I like to call Mr. Squeegee Feet. I call him that because he has squeegees for feet. He's a great friend to have around when you want something squeegeed, and he's pretty much the only friend you ever want dancing on your car. Now, there are two different approaches we can take to rigging Mr. Squeegee Feet. The first is to dive right in and start rigging him. The second is to break him down into parts and figure out how to rig each of those parts one at a time. I'm going to take that second approach. I am not personally smart enough to tackle all the problems of a character rig all at once. It's too easy to get confused and lose track of things. I prefer to take on one problem at a time and then assemble all of the individual solutions in the final rig after I'm satisfied with them. I think this is usually the best way to approach rigging, and I strongly suggest that you do the same. So what parts of Mr. Squeegee Feet do we need to rig? Thankfully, he's a fairly simple character, so we really only need to rig a few parts. His eyes, his legs, his feet, and his body or head or whatever it is. That seems pretty manageable. We can figure out how to rig each of these parts separately, and then build the final rig using what we figured out. But before we do that, we need to figure out what Mr. Squeegee Feet is going to be used for. In fact, that's pretty much the first step with any rigging job, figuring out what the rig is going to be used for. It's just like designing anything else. If you're going to design an eating utensil, it's important to know if the person is going to be using it to eat soup or spaghetti. If they're going to be eating soup, they might need a spoon. If they're going to be eating spaghetti, they might need a fork. If you don't know what they're going to be eating, you could always design a spork, which will at least get the job done in either case. But if you know exactly what the utensil is going to be used for, then you can really design it to be amazing for that specific case. The same is true with rigs. Often you will know ahead of time what animations the rig is going to be used for, and you can then optimize the design of the rig for those animations, often resulting in a simpler, easier to use rig. Consider the bouncy ball from the previous chapter. For some situations, our first version of the rig, the super simple one, would have been fine. And if we knew those situations was all the rig was going to be used for, then we could have stopped there. On this DVD, I get to make up our requirements. <laughs> and I will be specifying those requirements at the beginning of each chapter, so you can get used to thinking about rigging this way. Rigging is a means to an end, so you need to know what that end is. In the case of Mr. Squeegee Feet, I'm going to artificially say that we don't need squash and stretch. Mr. Squeegee Feet is sufficiently silly without that. I'm also going to say that the only things Mr. Squeegee Feet ever does is walk and look around. He doesn't fly or fall from great heights or do acrobatics or make facial expressions or anything like that. All he ever does is walk and look around. So, with those requirements in mind, Let's get started.